Hello, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have my June wrap up. I'm not sure how this angle is working out but I am getting a new tripod soon like I have ordered one I'm just waiting for it to arrive and oh my god I can't wait because my tripod is so wobbly. So as a reading month June was terrible it was my worst one of the year so far I did manage to read five books but one was a graphic novel which took me like an hour to read so I read like four books and then a very short graphic novel. Some of you will know that my mum passed away earlier this month and her funeral was later in the month so there was a lot of prep for that a lot of things to do. Obviously Obviously I've been grieving so I haven't really wanted to read and it all just contributed to a pretty poor reading month. But let's just get into the stats. So I read a total of five books this month which added up to 1,946 pages which worked out at an average of 66 pages per day. My average pages per day is normally around 98 so as you can tell very bad reading month. For the star ratings, I read two three star books, one four star book and two five star books. For demographics, we had three young adult, one adult and one new adult, which was my first new adult of, I wanna say ever, but definitely like I haven't read one in the last two years. Formats, I read three normal length novel type standard things. <laughs> One graphic novel and one I listened to mostly an audiobook and then some like physical reading as well. And then for the genres we had no doubling up on genres this month. So I read one sci-fi, one fantasy, one LGBT contemporary, one romance and one paranormal romance. So let's just get into the books. The first book that I finished this month every single time I film. The first book that I finished this month was Saga Volume 8 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. As you all know, I have been reading Saga. This is a sci-fi sort of Romeo and Juliet set in space where you have two people from warring planets who fall in love and have a baby. And because of this, they are hunted by the government and mercenaries from their respective planets. I gave this one five stars. It wasn't the strongest one in the series so far. Probably, I think my least favorite so far has been the fifth one followed by the eighth one. However, this collection of graphic novels still des deserves five stars. It's absolutely fantastic. There's high emotion, everything's high stakes. It's like a roller coaster of all sort of different feels. And as well as that, it's very morally gray because not only do you follow the main characters, but you also follow the mercenaries that are sent after them who have their own problems and their own things to deal with. So in the grand scheme of whose side you're on, it's difficult to say. Then I read one of my most anticipated releases of 2018, which was Warstorm by Victoria Aveyard. This is the tour exclusive edition with the blue spray of pages. Unfortunately, I could not make it to the sign-in. I was supposed to go with my best friend on the 4th of June, but my mum was not very well at that point and so I had to be at the hospital but my friend kindly went and got this from the signing for me and it is personalised to Rebecca and signed. This is my second signed Victoria Aveyard book. I also went to a sign-in for Red Queen and it also comes with this cool bookmark and a poster with this art on as well. I gave this five stars. I did a book diary for it because it was a 2018 release. The book diary that I did as well, I've tried like a new reaction type style, which I think works better. So if you have read that book, if you want to go check that out, let me know if you like that style of vlog book diary thing. This is the best book in the Red Queen series so far. I thought that it was very high stakes. It was non-stop action from cover to cover. A lot of people have said that the Red Queen series is very slow and it is. I always really enjoy them reading them the first time but I've reread every other book in this series and it is quite slow. It is quite slow at the beginning of all of the stories. However, this one was fully action packed. There were so many amazing battle scenes. You saw the characters using their powers in new and exciting ways. So like the Magnetrons were like levitating cars, like in the midst of like fire and everything being thrown at them. And it was like so intense and I absolutely loved it. Wasn't a fan of the ending of this, but not because the ending wasn't good, just because I personally did not like it. But yeah, I would highly recommend if you have been undecided about whether to finish the series, like you thought the first book was good or, and then didn't like the second, or if you thought it was just okay, Victoria Aveyard's writing has come on so much from the time that she read she wrote Red Queen. And this is absolutely amazing. She is writing a short story collection that's gonna follow this and sort of wrap up the rest of the world. Another thing that may kind of made me sad in this is that the world is opened up so much, but obviously just for this one book. But I'm so excited to see what she comes out with next and I really, really love this. So that seemed to be all my five stars for the month. However, I have been in a really weird headspace. I've had a brain fog a lot of the time where like I'll try and remember what I did yesterday and it's just like there's a block on my brain and I just can't, can't do it. 
So that could have also contributed to a lot of the reading that I did this month. Um, a lot of the things, I can't really remember a lot about them because of the headspace I was in when I was reading, but I will try and give you a review for them as best I can. So the next book that I read was Leah on the Offbeat. I buddy read this with Heather. I believe her channel is now called Heather Doll. She changed it recently, but I will put a link to her in my description box. This is by Becky Albertalli and this is the much anticipated sequel of Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda. A lot of people were excited for its release, a lot of people were disappointed and I must say that I am also one of the people who was disappointed. I do tend to rate Becky Albertalli books quite highly, however in hindsight I don't think I really should because I essentially hate the characters at the beginning and then really like the end. But I gave this one three stars. I thought that there were some pointless characters in there. There's a character that's there literally just to create conflict. She's supposed to be one of Leah's friends but she literally does not really have any part in the story apart from to say something controversial and then there's a fallout from that and Leah's bitter about it but the character is actually never there. The romance was very forced. I did not like the love interest. I think it came out of nowhere. There was no chemistry between the two characters. The romance was not believable. I did not believe that one of the characters would be if she was a human being and you know, like a real person I wouldn't have got the vibe from her that turns out in this book like I don't feel like anything that happened in Simon would make this character the way she is now there was no hints laid out in Simon versus the Homo Sapien agenda there was nothing in that book that would lead me to believe that what happened in Leah on the Offbeat would happen. I just did not believe the romance at all. There is a very controversial scene about labelling in this that a lot of people have taken great offence at. I am not part of the LGBT community so I have not been personally offended by this book but I do understand why. There are two sides to the argument both of which I can see as being reasonably valid but it was definitely kind of a pointless thing to put in the book. It's not challenged. If Becky Albertalli felt like I do that both sides were reasonably valid then there should have been a reasonable discussion and breakdown of those where both characters put their points forward and came out with a sort of conclusion but that never happened. And overall I just kind of found it badly put together and not very well done. I did give it three stars although realistically I think it would be more of a two and I do feel like a lot of the characters and established relationships from Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda were completely lost in this book. For those of you that don't know this follows Liga from Simon and obviously Scott Lear on the offbeat and it is sort of her own story arc dealing with her sexuality and everyone's going to college and dealing with future plans and the conflicts that arise from people who are close making different future plans. And yeah, I just, I wasn't a fan. Then I read a book that I gave four stars. <laughs> I really liked this book. I really liked it. I docked it a star for being problematic, but that, that is literally the only thing wrong with this book. If it wasn't problematic, well, it was highly problematic in various areas, but if it wasn't for that, I would have definitely given this five stars. And that is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. This follows an 18 year old girl who was in a fire when she was 16, which has left her with scars, like burn scars over one half of her body. This has made her very self-conscious and it's ruined her acting career. One day she's having an argument with her dad and this guy called Benton James Kessler steps in and pretends to be her boyfriend and defends her. He is a writer and then they then decide to start a project where they meet every November 9 over the course of five years and he will write a novel about the sort of relationship, like a fictionalised romance novel that's loosely based on their relationship. This is a new adult romance. Colleen Hoover is known for being a problematic author but her writing is so addictive. I lived for this romance even though it was problematic. I'm in love with Benton James Kessler. He's like the dramatic, angsty, broken, <laughs> love interest that I have always been a sucker for. And I'm just gonna let you know a couple of things that happened early on, which is what makes this problematic, but essentially he wants her to wear more revealing clothes to push her outside of her comfort zone because she's so self-conscious about these scars and he doesn't think that she should be. So there is, I have, I have quotes. He tries to make her wear a more revealing dress and they're going for dinner and he says, I'm paying for dinner so I get to choose what to stare at while we eat. She says no, she doesn't want to wear a revealing dress. This makes her very uncomfortable. So then this is the first day that they've met. This is the first November 9. He undresses her and forcefully puts the dress on her. 
as he's undressing her she is very uncomfortable and in her inner monologue it says this is going too far too far too far too far however she still it's a romance she still falls for him even though he's pushy and that happened and there are various things like that throughout the book it is very overly, overly dramatic very angsty and with a lot of problematic nature however i personally believe about problematic content i absolutely love it i love problematic content i love the drama and the angst of like a high stakes problematic storyline and i personally believe that problematic content is okay as long as you realize that that is not an ideal that you want to carry into your life so i don't want a boyfriend like benton james kessler but that doesn't mean that i can't fall in love with him in a book there is also a very good quote which pretty much sums up my exact feelings about this book just because i like reading about those kinds of guys it doesn't mean i need my real life guys to act like that and that is pretty much an exact summary of my feelings for this book I found it so addicting. I have now reserved Slammed at the library. I just need to read more Colleen Hoover because this kind of like angsty, overly dramatic romance is just what I want right now. So I want to read everything by Colleen Hoover. Absolutely loved it, but it is problematic. If you do want a full depth breakdown of all the problematic instances in that book, I believe Witty Novels is the one who first drew attention to it. And she has essentially a page by page breakdown of every single problematic thing that happens. And I completely agree with everything she said, 100% agree, but but I still loved it whereas she absolutely hated it for those reasons but I will link that review in the description box if you want to check it out and see what kind of problematic instances are in this book and then the last book I read in June was Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater I gave this one three stars I really liked this this is a paranormal romance about a girl who is obsessed with wolves it is a werewolf book the wolves in the woods are werewolves I listen to this in audiobook and the problem with me in audiobooks is I listen to them when I'm driving or when I'm working so I don't really retain a lot of information. I think that this has quite a unique take on werewolves. Instead of like moon phases they turn based on the temperature so every chapter heading has the temperature and that sort of narrates like whether they're in wolf form or in human form. I would absolutely recommend the audiobook of this. I really liked it. The girl actually sounded like a teenage girl but not in like a really annoying way and I really like the narrator for Sam who was unfortunately changed for the sequel Lingo which is what I'm currently reading. I really like Maggie Stiefvater's writing. I know that's kind of make or break but I think it's a good mix of like a contemporary like sort of simplistic style with like punchy descriptive phrases in there occasionally and I did really enjoy that. There were a couple of things that I was surprised to see in this. For example at one point there is a discussion about what is it called? where one person is an adult and one is technically a child so Sam is 18 Grace is 17 so there's talk about consent and it not being appropriate and things which I've never seen in a YA book before because in the grand scheme of things if you think about it an 18 year old and a 17 year old there's nothing wrong with them being together it's the same as a 15 year old and a 16 year old or a 25 and a 26 year old it's one year difference it's not a big deal but in the eyes of the law it is breaking the law because one is an adult and one is a child so that was discussed which I found interesting and this is another book that follows the absentee parent trope but this was actually discussed on the page so Grace's parents her I can't remember what her dad does but her mum is an artist and she's always in her studio she's like at her physical studio or she's working on something upstairs Grace takes care of the house, she does the cooking, she feeds the family, she cleans and she is essentially the parent of the household even though she's only 17 but instead of that just being the absentee parent trope being an excuse for the plot to unfold without parental figures challenging it, it was actually discussed and Grace is not happy about the fact that her parents pay her no attention and don't even care that she exists. So I thought that was interesting that it was challenged on the page. I did find it to be a little cheesy in places but the audiobook really did help with my enjoyment of this. And there was a little bit at some point where her friend is missing and she tries to ring her and she's really concerned about it and then like weeks pass and she never like thinks oh I wonder where my friend is and what happened to her and why has she been missing and what's going on and I just thought that was really strange but overall I gave this one three stars I did enjoy it I am about a hundred and something pages into the sequel which I am also listening to an audiobook which they have changed the narrator but it's bearable it's still a good audiobook and yeah I'm impressed with my first book by Maggie Stiefvater and I am interested 
obviously in continuing the series. So that's everything for the five books that I read in June. I'm sorry that I rambled on a little bit, especially as I need to leave to go to Leeds at some point very soon. I'm going to see Wicked tonight. Please don't forget to enter my 1k giveaway if you haven't. I will pop a link up here. But that is everything from me today. Please let me know what you have read this month or if you've read and liked or hated anything that I've read. Give me your opinions on November 9 if you have read it. And please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head into my description box below you'll find a link to my Goodreads, Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish, body butter and candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today. Bye!